welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, and we've stepped up our game again. You make the phone call, and the big guests show up. Well, we were shooting for a student manager, and we ended up with the AD. So, you know, we'll take what we can get. I guess so. Yeah. First, Craig Bull, and now Gene Taylor, NDSU Athletic Director, joins us. First, thanks for for popping in. I've, I'm sure you've heard about the popularity of the blog, right? Well, you know, I just I just hope that my being here doesn't reduce your hits because I, I know you get a lot of hits on things and, and millions, quite, yes. millions. millions, and well, quite frankly. I don't know what the ESPN studios are like, but these are as nice as studios. Yeah, I mean, see, you got grandma's right? table here. It's just <laughs> it's, nothing better. You know, this is big time. You out. said I, I couldn't sleep last night <laughs> because with anticipation, just so you know. Well, here we go. Well, this calendar year has been remarkable for Bison Athletics, and, and we can go back to when the transition was made, but you obviously start with a national championship in football, men's basketball makes a postseason, softball's going again for the fourth straight year, volleyball made it three out of four years. If you look at it a whole, how would you how would you rate this this year? Well, you know, certainly there's a couple years ago where we had a lot of teams that made it into the postseason, but to, to crown it and add to that with a national championship is, is hard to describe, and the impact of that national championship is just something that you know, I think we felt it early on, and then we felt it for a period, and then you take a break a little bit, and all of a sudden the spring game, the numbers of the spring game, and then you know, from from next fall's perspective, everything from just exposure to revenue. But when you when you ask me to put this in this whole year into perspective. There's a lot of my colleagues that would like to have just a couple of teams do what we've done mm -hmm. this year. The fact that we've had several and that we've done it for a couple of years in a row now is, is pretty incredible. We're very, August, very fortunate. August 30th, 2002. Remember that day? <laughs> I do remember that day. <laughs> that was the day we announced we were going to Division One. And imagine what you've done now. Any? Could you ever think of a, of a, of a scenario like this? You know, I, I, not really. I, I felt someday we could be – our goal was to win a national championship mm -hmm. in football. This soon, no. But then to have all the other sports mm -hmm. have the success they did, that to me is what's been, I don't want to say most surprising, but I guess the most – most enjoyable because those were the things that people said we just couldn't do. It was going to take years. We were never going to be competitive. We were never going to win championships. Those were the things I heard from August 30th for the first couple of years many, many At times. At least, yeah. yeah. Many times. I think the other thing they probably were asked is when are you going to get a playoff football game at the Fargo Dome? And now you've had four in the last two years. And Craig Bolt came in and told us it's a different vibe. When did you get a different yeah. sense of atmosphere of the Bison experience at the Dome? I tell you, I know, I know exactly what it was. Was last, last year we played Robert Morris. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had some games that people got fired up, uh, but there was 12, a little over 12,000 people for that Robert Morris game, and they were the loudest 12,000. And then this year, that Northern Iowa game, I walked out of the game with a headache, and it just kept rolling from there. And every playoff, it seemed to get louder and louder and louder. And I think you'll sense that from the very beginning this year, mm -hmm. uh, from the first game. You know, a lot of fans, and especially uh, watchers as blogger, are, are tailgaters, and yeah. that's really taken off. Any plans to do anything with that faction of the game day experience? We actually are. You know, with the, with the addition of the Fargo Dome paving the, the grass lot over there, we're going to create an area along the trees. It'll be kind of the corporate tent. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it'll almost be like a carnival spine where there'll be tents along there. The Team Acre tent is now going to be a, a, a full-fledged catered event, so we're, you know, hopefully have some more musical opportunities in there and bands and that so it's really going to dress it up quite a bit we've added some additional space so the additional 60 spots in the reserve space because we're going to move the tents to this what we call a spine an entertainment spine so it's going to be heck we had <laughs> we had three quarters of yeah. the thing filled for, for spring the spring ball. game mm -hmm. it was awesome any chance how about a bathroom in the press box let's get some priorities here <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> don't be getting too carried away you media guys <laughs> get right. all the attention yes. my right. goodness that is, my bad yeah. that is true my watch, bad watch heck, your, you got food stuff. you got hot food up there right <laughs> My bad. We are taken care of yep. uh, in that <laughs> aspect. I do want to ask you, is there a sport that's had success that surprised you over the last 10 years? It's really shot up and said, boy, I didn't think we would be this successful at the Division One level. Well, I, I tell you, the one that has been most pleasing this year is baseball. And and it was a sport that we, we, we brought along the, the slowest in terms of scholarship and in terms of funding. Um, you know, Todd Brown's come in with a great, he came in with a great plan five years ago and said, this is what we need to do to be successful. And, and we were able to meet it. You know, he didn't rush it. He did it on a year-by-year -year mm -hmm. basis. And the fact that they're in a position with a with a great team this year to, you know, certainly they're making the tournament, but now will they make the NCAA tournament beyond that? That's very difficult. But from where they 
they were to where they are today is a program that's really come the mm. furthest that I've really enjoyed watching them grow. Now how about on the flip side? You had one program this year, women's basketball, that struggled. I, I would say that that's a, a, an equally frustrating thing for probably our fan base is that was the one sport that everybody thought because yes. of what had happened at Division Two, they would just keep rolling, and they haven't. And that's, you know, I think uh, everybody understands that. Carolyn understands it better than anybody. Mm. When she when she replaced who she replaced in Amy, she knew the standard was going to be pretty high, and, and she's doing everything she can to fix that. And, you know, she's got a couple opportunities. She just hired a couple of new coaches, and we'll, we'll, that'll help. I think they've got a pretty good solid core of players, and with Katie coming back. But, but you're right. That is a team that I think everybody would probably say in terms of disappointment, women's basketball might might fit that fit that bowl. Would you say it's a make or break year for Carolyn and the women's team? Yeah, you know, it's always a tough thing to, to say. I think improvement is just something that she wants to see happen, and, and improvement in terms of whether it's, you know, I don't remember what they finished. Did they finish fourth or fifth this year? They finished fourth, fourth in the summer. Fourth, again. you know, but it was it was. Let's be honest, it wasn't the prettiest fourth mm-hmm. place finish. You know, so certainly more competitive. You know, do they have to win the summer league? No, I don't think they do. But I think they need to be more competitive. And is there a number of games they have to win? I never do that. We never do that with our coaches. And you know, we talked about that with Craig. Was there a number he had mm-hmm. to win? No, you just need to get better. And I think that's that's their goal and be competitive. All right. Let's talk about Craig. Uh, two years ago, going off three and eight, and a lot. Of people weren't pleased shall we say and now he wins a national title is there any fear of losing him or have you been have you been contacted about him well I wasn't this year but I think quite frankly the reason I wasn't was because jobs are getting filled so quickly anymore yeah. you know if somebody gets fired or move on they hire somebody within a couple of weeks well he was so deep into the playoffs that people just didn't have time to talk to him so uh, is there always a fear yeah when you win a national championship and build the program we have but Craig feels very good where he is. You know, he gets compensated at a very high level at our level, FCS level. So it's going to, you know, he's not going to take a Sunbelt job. He's not going to take a MAC job. He gets paid at a, at a level that's probably better or equal to that. So it's going to take a pretty big job to get him to move away from here. Is there a moment that you thought that you may lose him? Was it two years ago when that first run? Yeah, was the, it 10 and, the 10 and 1, the second mm-hmm. 10 and 1 season. Uh, is that when they, no, when did they hire Brewster? 2007. Was that, yeah. I think it was after the first 10 yeah. and 1. Yeah. That year was the one I really, because there was a lot of people calling him. Northern Illinois, uh, Minnesota called. There was a couple other things that called. Uh, since then, I haven't worried too much about it because, you know, I was really concerned about Colorado State this year. That was the one mm-hmm. that I felt mm-hmm. if, if if the AD had not been fired, if Paul Kowalczyk would have still been there, I think Craig Bowl would have been the next coach of Colorado Problem State. Problem is they don't have a uh, media blog at Colorado <laughs> see, State. <laughs> you know, if they don't have a media You're blog, solid. You're see, well, you guys going. bring things to the table yeah. that a lot of programs don't bring. <laughs> You keep saying that, too, right? <laughs> and we keep coaches around here because of that. So there's part one with Gene Taylor with their on-the-field stuff. There's plenty more to talk off the field of BSA, realignment. We'll talk about the Gene next time on the Bison Video Blog.